Hello humans. So in this video we're going to be looking at how to extract non-blank data from an array. More precisely, how to write a formula that will look at the data in rows 2 through 9 and rearrange it the way you see it in rows 32 through 36. The formula is a bit long so I've broken it down into three steps. The first of which is to identify the position of each of the values we want to extract from the array above. Here you'll see that the value 100 is in row 2, the value 105 in row 5, the value 110 in row 6, and so on. So how does that work? Well, the formula to find the position looks like this. And you'll see that it starts with the function equals small. And the variables required for the function equals small are array and k. Basically, what the function does is return the kth smallest value in an array. What does that mean? Let's take a quick look. I'm going to input the function by itself, provide this array, and tell it to return the third smallest value. Now it's not working because the array is empty, but let's enter some values. Now as we enter the third value, it's showing us that the third smallest value is 103. But if we enter a value less than 103, it'll again change to the third smallest value. So let's go back to our formula. Clearly the array and k are a bit more complex here. Let's start by identifying k. Excel is helpful in that if you scroll through the formula, it tells you precisely where you are. And so here it's showing us that k is made up of two summed functions, count blank and row. Count blank works precisely the way it sounds. It counts the number of blanks in an array. And since the cell references are fixed, it's going to return the same value every time. So let's highlight it, hit F9, and you'll see that it returns the value 3, which makes sense because there's three blanks in the array above. The row function works by returning the row number. So row B1 will return the value 1. Row, however, is not a fixed reference. So as the formula is copied down, k increases by a value of 1. Let's do the same for count blank. So whereas previously it was a value of 4, now we have a value of 5. And this will repeat the whole way down. So now that we understand k, let's go back to the array. The array in the function small is defined by everything highlighted here. And since the array starts with the index function, let's take a moment to explain how that works. Index searches an array and then returns a value based on the row number provided. So as an example, I'll just use 5, close paren, enter. So index will return a value when I get to the fifth row. Simple enough. But what's unique about index is that if the row number is 0, it will return all the values in the array. But here's what's frustrating about solving how this works. If you hit enter, it will return an error. The array values are all there, but you have to put it in a function that can read the array. And that's where the function equals small comes in. To give you an idea of the array created, let's highlight the index function, push F9, and you'll see that the array has returned all of the locations of the numbers above. And if we look at the value for k, now we see that the formula is returning the fourth smallest value in the array provided. And the fourth smallest value is 2. In the formula below, we're now looking for the fifth smallest value in the same array, which is 5, and so on. So I'm nearly done explaining the array, but let's go back and look at one more thing. We know that row returns the value of the rows. So for the array above, it makes sense that you get the values 2 through 9. And the function isNumber returns true or false based on whether or not a cell contains a number. Now in Excel, true carries the value 1 and false carries the value 0. So if you multiply these two arrays together, it will only reflect the rows that contain numbers. And that's how the formula identifies the position of each of the values above. Next, we want to return the value, and that's actually much easier. All of this is identical to the formula above. The only thing that's been added is equals index. And if you recall from the quick index demonstration, the way the function works is that if you provide it a row number, it returns a value in the array provided that matches that row number. And since we know that the highlighted portion of this formula is returning the value 2, then we know that it should return the second value in the array provided. 
or 100. And finally, we can move on to the last step, which is fortunately the simplest of all. Adding the function if error cleans up the formula so that you don't have these three errors at the bottom. The function works by checking if your formula is correct. So, so long as the formula works, it will return that value. But if it doesn't, it will return the value if error, which we have as just two quotation marks so that it will leave the cell blank. And that's how you can extract all of the non-blank data. Alternatively, if you want to extract all non-zero values, you can accomplish that by adding one additional step. Write an if statement that tells Excel to return NA if the value is zero. And then in the formula we just walked through, change the language so that instead of looking for blanks, the formula looks for text. And you can achieve the same result. And that's it for now. I hope that's helpful. Seriously, stop watching. Okay, bye-bye.